Sports Office, very special today. And it's timely because the Lobos are struggling in football, and we have a guy who, when he was playing, struggle was not the word. <laughs> Dr. Moore, <laughs> career rushing leader for the Lobos and the Mountain West Conference. And, uh, you know, you provided us with some great excitement. I mean, we can't even sit there in, t in, in sports office and talk about that. Your seasons, we just get excited. It's, it is. It's crazy. It, it, Lobo football has definitely changed. Things have changed over the last few years, but it was an exciting time we were playing. You know that. Right. You know, you guys are up. Your mic are up top and watching those games yeah. and a part of some great teams, um, you know. And, and it's exciting to, to know what we've done, and it's kind of sad to see what's kind of transpired over the last few years. But, you know, that, that unfortunately, that's the kind of situation we're in right now. And what about, what have you been doing, you know, like, uh, tell people what have you been doing. I know there you were, you've, you know, had a couple of, Stops in the NFL and then the, the IFL with the uh, Amarillo Ven Venom. Tell people how that went. Yeah, you know, uh, interesting life change for me. You know, things that have gone on since I left the University of New Mexico. I was with the Jets for a little bit and, you know, got released and with the Titans and, you know, got released and with the Bucks and got released and came back home to New Mexico and was just kind of living, you know, for the first time, in my, first time in my life, not really sure exactly where to go, what was going on. You know, but nonetheless, still living the dream, enjoying life. And um, um, about a year and a half that I had been out of football, almost two years now, I should say, um, the Professional Indoor Football League called me and said, hey, you know, we have a business proposal for you. Care to listen? So I listened and, you know, told my job. And they let me go down there and play. And, and I ended up doing, you know, pretty well, you know, to, to know that I still had it and had the ability to play at a high level was, was fun. Just to get back out there with the guys, you know how that is. You know, right, you play right, right. just yeah, to, exactly. the camaraderie. That's yeah. what I wanted to do, to compete at a high level, and that's what I was able to do. So uh, that season ended, and I came back, and financially I had to, you know, figure out what I wanted to do with my life. So, I, you know, now I'm working at the Juvenile Detention Center with the children, and, and that's another challenge that, that I enjoy greatly. And so... You know, life is good. You know, life is definitely good for Don Trump. What is that like, you know, working with kids and trying to help them out of a tough situation and all that? Honestly, I feel like I was born to do it. I really do, Vante. I, I, certain things you know, you know, when you wake up in the morning and I, I would do that job for free. You know, they pay me well and I would do it for free. I really would. I just enjoy what I do. Those kids are, um, just need someone other than their gang member friends or their, you know, drug dealer friends to just to to care about them in a different light and what I like believe to do them, huh? is believe in them actually and what I like to do is in the because they're all competitive right. you know as well as I do that that world is, is highly competitive yeah, yeah, yeah. so what I want to do is figure out a way to channel that competitive nature into a better good right. and that's what I do through athletics and sportsmanship and things like that so you know it's an amazing job and a lot of them know who I am you know, and I come from a single, you know, single mom, single parent household, as a lot of them did, and a lot of them do. You know, humble beginnings, poverty, and trying to make it and do those things, you know, with, with not the means. And, and I'm a testimony to them. And so I learn from them, they learn from me, and, it's, and the reciprocity is, is amazing. So it's an, it's an amazing job for sure. You know, when you say a lot of them know who you are, you know, there's a documentary with you when <laughs> you were from the NFL when you were trying to get drafted yeah. and all that stuff that it comes on all the time, you know, and, and I'm sure it comes on Dish yeah. Network. Have you seen yeah, it? Yeah, I've seen it several times, you know. I, I was in it. I was in I, it. I know. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. I was just messing with you. Yeah, no, Netflix, and I've had people call me, and, you know, um, a pastor called me from North Carolina and actually wrote me a letter. Just a random guy, I don't know him, found my, found my church and sent this letter to my home and said he was inspired by that, yeah. that through all the things. Because it was a tough, it was, it was a, a tough, 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 yeah, tough yeah, video for me. It was a tough watch. My wife was. was really upset. Absolutely. And if, <laughs> if you're invested or if you care, yeah, no doubt. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people say. They said they can't watch it. But, yeah. you know, you know, if it doesn't kill you, it makes you strong. And, and exactly. I'm a living testimony to that. And it was just uh, amazing to see somebody, a pastor in North Carolina, he had a con congregation of about, you know, four or 5,000 members. And he said, you know, he talked about me, that even in the, in the midst of, of all this turmoil yeah. and, you know, these high expectations and, you know, not really seeing those come to, to fruition right. and me still saying, you know what, God is good. You know, he will intervene and it's in his hands. And he just, so it was amazing, you know, and everything that you do and everything that I've done, um, you don't realize how, how much it affects people and how much it touches lives, whether it's scoring touchdowns and right which the Lobos, we did a lot of that when we were playing, or, or if it's just, you know, 
uh, being faithful to God and or touching touching the lives of children. So you know everything is great. You know those kind of situations to be a part of that, to be able to to affect lives in any way, shape, form, or fashion is something that that I've embraced for a long time. Yeah, in your case, 51 touchdowns over 4,000 yards. 59, but I'm not counting. No one's 59. counting. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. 51 rushing touchdowns, eight receiving. But you know. You yeah, know, I was, I was thinking no, about the kidding. rush because no, when, when you see the career rushing record, you know that those numbers are right up there. It is, man. So, it's pretty cool. So 59 touchdowns overall, and um, man, that's that's a lot of work. And we were just talking about how you used to just make us, man. We we felt like we owed you money. I mean, man, <laughs> like man, it was, he entertained us so much. It was you know, fun. Some of the some of the stuff that you used to do. That's fun. But about that and about the state of Lobo football now. I mean, you had some great success. You guys had teams that were like just just teams that just go out there and just beat people up. Physical, hard working, you know, like full of fire. And now you don't see that. And I mean, as a former player, I know it bothers me as a former player. How do you feel as a former player? To, to see the turnaround happen so fast from, from you know, winning tradition, from guys that just really wanted it and got, after the, got out there and got after it, to see it kind of you know, like I said, transpire and transform into what it is now, is, it's, it's heart-wrenching. Because if you're vested in the Lobos like so many of us are, so many of you guys, so many of the fans, and so many of the players, you want to see them go out there and compete. And that's what's most important is it seems as though, I don't know, you know, I don't know the guys and I'm not going to pretend to know the guys, but I just know that it's a different feel. Whatever it is, you know, is, is um, you know, I'm not it. I'm not in practice. I'm not in the meeting rooms. I'm not on the field. But it seems as though they're just, they're just missing something, that fire, that oomph, that want to, that desire that we all had, all of us. And maybe we took it for granted. Maybe we spoiled the state of New Mexico and that just wasn't how things are supposed to be. But it's tough. It really is. And I'm not sure why. I don't, I don't have the answers or no one does. And hopefully the next guy coming in will have the answers. And, and, just, and I think it has to start from within. It has to completely clean the house, you know, start from the core, start from the foundation. And that's signing some New Mexico kids. If that's, you know, getting somebody from that play there to come back. And, I don't know what it could be, you know, but it has to change. And, and I think it will. I think it will. And I think that makes a difference having some New Mexico kids because you're here year round, and you don't want to be the guy that's at the butt of everybody's jokes. jokes. Like, yeah, man, you all are sorry. Oh, you can't do this, or you can't do. You can't. There's no escape. You can't go home for a few months and then show up when school starts. <laughs> right. You're here. Period. And that's and honestly, a lot of the children that are playing now are not from here. And I'm not saying it's them. You know, it's everything. It's it, it starts from the from the head man all the way down to to the 101st player on the roster, and it's a collective, a collective effort to, to producing what happens on Saturdays. And what people don't realize is Saturday we come out, we play, and that's what you see. But it's the weeks, the practices, the summers, the, the off-season, the training camp. That's where your pr uh, product is produced, there. It's not on Saturdays. And so I just, have to, just kind of have to go back to the drawing board, and I have full confidence in the university that they'll do what's right and, and turn this around because there's nowhere to go but up, you know. And, Hopefully, hopefully they'll figure it out. Like I said, it, it might take bringing, you know, somebody that's played before, somebody that's been from here to yeah. get in a situation, you know. If they need my help, let me know. You know, I just, I love the Lobos and I always have and so always will. So if, if the Lobos call tomorrow, Don Moore, 22, we need your number again. I'm coming. I'm there. I do. I, I love the university. I always have, and, and I'll do anything for the, the university. And like I said, I, I, I'm, I'm completely vested, you know, from the soul of my – from the soul, from the heart, you know, I'm completely vested and I want to see him turn it around. So, um, and, and I have no doubt that, that, that they'll get it done. I think they need some tradition, like, like maybe some old players, like, be around and remind these guys, like, look, you know, you, let's keep this up. You, you got to start something to where there's a bar to reach. Absolutely. And there's, and there, and there's people coming behind that to understand, to know what that means. You know, just like even, like, uh, the rivalry game. I don't know. Oh, right. These guys realized what the rivalry game was this past, uh, with, with the past weekend. How how can you fully encompass and embody the the importance of the rivalry if you never knew about it, ever? The yeah. first time you knew about New Mexico, New Mexico State is the week before you played them. And, that, and that's no knock on them, you know. No, no, the kids, I know what you're saying. You know it's what just I'm a saying? different feel. It's a different feel, you know. If I'm from Washington, D.C., yeah. if I'm up in Maryland, I know nothing about the New Mexico, New Mexico State rivalry. That doesn't mean that those kids can't come in and contribute contribute to that and be a part of that because we had guys from Texas and all, right. and all over the place that just bought into it. 
But there you was, know, but there was a Mexico core foundation, exactly. To, to suck them you, in. You like, got it. Hey, man, you I'm got with listen, this. Hey, let's get you know? this, absolutely. Because yeah. when I go out, you know, we hanging out, at, we're at Chili's having a, a dinner, and I see a guy from Cruces, he's going to let me know. Ten years down the road, they're going to see. I see guys, you know, from Cruces on that team now that talked about the time they beat us the first year, you know, and we beat them the next. So, you know, that you don't get that from the guys who didn't grow up here. And like I said, we had guys that didn't grow up here that just right. bought into it, but it was a collective effort. And, and those so games were fun. There nucleus of you guys, exactly. Mexico guys here. To kind of impose our will. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. You got it. Yeah, so, so uh, what do you think as far as, uh, how do you think, you know, about the Loxley's deal? Do you think that was fair or what do you think about that? <laughs> I played the fifth. I do have that. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. No, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know. Like I said, I, I don't like to blame it. You can't blame it on one particular person or, or you know, a coaching staff or a player or a collective. You know, it's like I said, I keep saying it. it's, it's, it's everyone as a whole. When you win together, you lose together. So, you know, I wish him nothing but the best. You know, he, he'll figure out what's best for him and his family and, and um, he'll go from there. But uh, the university is in a situation where they have to, to, to choose wisely and, and, and move forward. And, and that's that's what they need to do. And and like I said, I wish them best of uh, the best of luck. And I have no doubt that they'll figure it out. That's what you do. You know, you you fall down, but you get back up. You know, that's just what you have to do. You know, even the guy that's been on top has fallen down. Miami, right. they they were on top. Now they've fallen down. They're gonna pick. So it happens. It happens from from the Moose Kitchen Band to to Ohio State. You you know, no one is immune from the trials and tribulations of life. No right. team, right. no matter how powerful you are or how low you are. So, you know, New Mexico is not exempt from that. And you know, I don't know. I initially come in and I thought I was excited about Loxley. I was excited about, you know, the, the potential and things like that. But it didn't just come to fruition. It didn't. It didn't kind of metamorphosize into what we wanted it to be. But that's life. Yeah. And that happens everywhere. And it's hard now because it's like they have nothing. Nothing. It I mean, is. It's, it's tough. Like, there's, there's no, I don't know. I know the, uh, I, I was talking to Coach Barlow about it, like the guys playing with fire. Uh -huh. He said they're trying. You know, I guess they, some of them are injured and all that. I just, it's just, wow, it's just, I've never seen it like it's this. Tough. It's tough to watch. And I, I play soccer now, which I'm, I picked it up a couple years ago, so I enjoy it. So every day, I, every Sunday I play soccer, I show up at the field, and they never, never fails. How about your Lobos, Don Show? Every Sunday morning, because they just watch the Lobos play. And I, the one that got me the most, that really just kind of tugged at me, was they said that an high, a New Mexico high school team would give us a run for our money. Cleveland. They said Cleveland High School would beat us by two touchdowns. That's oh. tough to fathom. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, I know that it's not true. I know that it's not true because that's just, you know, college to high school is a total yeah. different game. But for them to think that it'd be true, yeah. what does that say about what's going on at our, yeah, at our how school? Far things how far fallen. things have fallen. So, you know, those, those comments are tough. And I have, I, yeah, to play football, to be in the spotlight, you have to have a tough skin. Being in the raid and yeah, the right, news, man. you yeah, have to be, have a do. tough skin. You have to have a lot of layers. But those kind of things, you know, they kind of they chip at your armor. You know, like, wow, we are struggling that bad that, that my friends and my peers think that a high school team would beat us. That's yeah. tough. That's tough. Well, hey, That's one, tough. More, one more thing before I get out of here, because we always go back and forth on, like, oh, I like this game, I like that game. I, we were just, me and Dominic Crispin were just talking about how when you guys played Wyoming one year and you guys were, like, kind of struggling and you went nuts on them and you, like, broke this guy's ankles off, like, right into <laughs> goal line. But uh, Was it at Wyoming or here? It was at Wyoming. Oh, okay, okay. What, what's, what's your favorite, your favorite game, Lobo game, and, and why? Oh, it's so hard. Oh, man, played in... Missouri. So many games. Missouri's up there. Just the the magnitude. We were the you know big underdog. Um, but for me, it'd have to be at the University of Mexico because, and that's one thing when people ask me, and you know, we gotta go. But the the fans in New Mexico love 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 the Lobos. I, I still when I go around town, they still remember and say hello and appreciate you know all those things. So I would say the biggest moment. Like I said I had many. It's hard and. And there's probably some 1AAs down the line. But I would think when we beat Colorado State, it was on ESPN. It was a national televised game. I had 242 yards. And Wes, Wes Dunker hit the, the game-winning field goal, and we won 34-31 over Colorado State, which at the time was the, you know, the big, the big program in our conference. And we knocked them off on, on ESPN. And yeah. that was a game that I went over. Uh, uh, no, no, no. That was a sophomore year. That was the game that I broke. Season, single season rushing record, and you know we came back. They had Bradley Van Pelt, the big yeah, old that. linebacker yeah, quarterback that, yeah. guy, and the crowd went crazy and rushed the field, and we beat them 34-31, walk off, walk off fashion, and 
and um, it was just amazing. It really was. I think I that was, was that was an amazing night. I was going to say Colorado State because it seems like every Sonny Lubick recruited you really hard. Really, it, and every time you all played Colorado I, State, I averaged 200 you, some, you went nuts. 200 <laughs> something yards. That was my average. In, in four games, I think my average was like 202 against them. It was pretty yeah. crazy. He, 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 there was a quote that's in one of our media guys that said, when Don Trill makes it to the NFL, he needs to give me a, a cut of that for the games that he had against us. But, you know, for whatever reason, we, we got it done against Colorado State, and we, we stepped up to play. You know that. My kid is. He, he, he was at, on the sideline watching you do that once. It was, you had like, I don't know, like 10 yards in the first half. And then, and then I said, exploded. I said, he's going to carve him up in the second we did. half. And my kid was like, you think so? I said, I had like sure 200 I yards in the second <laughs> half. It was crazy because we got out and we said, at halftime, we're just going to get it. We're going to get it. Because Doss came up to me and said, Don Trill, get ready to go, young man. And I said, okay. I talked to the big boys up front. And I love those guys. And I know any good running back would tell you that you can't do anything without those guys. And so I'm no different. But we, we rallied behind each other, got it together. You know, some ankle breaking time. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, yeah, you and, broke some ankles. And so, <laughs> so it was showtime. But it was fun, like you said. And there's so many. There's so many. Yeah. I could think of several games where it was just wow. You know, the Utah game, my, my freshman year, the, uh, the triple overtime game. Uh, so many games that you could just think of um, that, that we went out there and got it done. But, you know, everything is good. Well, good. So, Dontrell Moore in the sports office, Dominic Crespin behind the camera. Until next time, we'll see you later.